Thunderbolt 5, even though some things have been out earlier this year, it's now a thing. We've got computers with Thunderbolt 5, both in that shape and in this shape. We've got docks. This is a brand new one that just came out and I'm still waiting for my OWC dock, but OWC also created uh, this little thing. Thunderbolt 5 drive. Is it worth it? I mean, new technology is always really expensive, but this is supposed to be fast. Thunderbolt 5 is two times faster than Thunderbolt 4. Theoretically, Thunderbolt 4 transfers up to 40 gigabits per second speed. Thunderbolt 5, 80 gigabit per second. But Thunderbolt 5 also has something called dynamic rebalancing. Uh, if it detects that it needs more, it can go up to 120 gigabit per second in certain situations when going in one direction. But let's test this out. What does it mean? Is it actually going to reach those speeds? Is it going to be faster? Don't forget your Thunderbolt 5 cables. By the way, I have a separate video coming out comparing cables because there's a few of them on the market now and they're not very expensive. Some of them are not. Now, OWC, this company right here, uh, this thing is dangling off of there. Uh, <laughs> they made a couple of docks uh, that I've been using for years now and I like them. So I kind of trust this company to make good stuff, especially stuff that works with Apple. The cable is attached right to the drive which is kind of odd but it does say t5 right on there or five that means we're good to go so real world usage but i think the most use that we're going to get out of this is going to be transferring to hard drives and driving more monitors that are larger and more capable you're supposed to be able to drive three monitors three 4k monitors directly from one thunderbolt connection we'll try that out first let's start with a network test how fast can these things actually talk to each other let's say you have two different uh, thunderbolt 5 devices like two macbook pros for example or maybe you have uh, some mac minis you wanted to link together for a cluster now I'm using a tool that I installed using Homebrew called iperf3 and I can create one machine as a server with dash s it's going to be listening and then on another machine I can say iperf3 dash c this is the client and it's going to talk to the IP of the other machine. So this is going over Wi-Fi it's connecting over Wi-Fi <laughs> yeah I don't have the best Wi-Fi at home I know you're all going to laugh at me in the comments that's fine you can go ahead and laugh 552 megabits per second okay it's not that fast. Now as a baseline I'm also using my M2 Max MacBook Pro, which does not have Thunderbolt 5, it has Thunderbolt 4. So we're gonna see the improvement over time, how things have improved since Thunderbolt 4 days until today. Now it's not enough to just connect them with a cable. You actually have to set up Thunderbolt networking. So you do that through system settings and then under network, make sure you have Thunderbolt bridge set up. My IP address is configured manually. So I'm using 192.168.10.10 here for this Mac mini and I'm going to use a different IP for the MacBook Pro. Under details, make sure under TCP IP you have it set to manual. There's the IP address. Make sure your subnet mask is correct. And then under hardware, make sure you're using jumbo packets here. I got to make sure I'm doing the same thing over here unless I unplug this so I'm not getting a LAN signal and I'm gonna ping 10.10 to make sure we're getting bytes there we go the communication here is happening strictly via Thunderbolt now and my client is gonna talk to the different subnet IP address now so here we're getting 37.8 gigabits per second that's a lot faster than before over Wi-Fi this is a nice signal you can transfer files very quickly over this remember the theoretical limit for Thunderbolt 4 is 40 gigabits per second so we're really close to that which is great now i'm going to test out the new device which is my new computer the m4 max macbook pro and this one is thunderbolt 5 capable so is that mac mini i have it plugged into so let's see what we get i made sure i have the same kind of configuration under my network thunderbolt bridge but make sure you have a different ip here and let's do iperf 3 dash c talking 2.10 oh look at that 64 gigabits per second 64 uh, wait why is it not going up to 80? We're only getting to 63.9 average. Thunderbolt 4 almost reached the theoretical limit of 40, but this one isn't even close to 80. Well, the reason for this is because of PCIe tunneling, which Thunderbolt uses when you're doing networking over Thunderbolt. And we're going to be limited by the maximum PCIe output. So Thunderbolt 5 in this case has a maximum theoretical bandwidth of 64 gigabit per second over PCIe. And that's what we're getting over the network. But we might be able to get more than that if we hook up displays and send display data because some of that bandwidth is allocated for display data. Now that we've proved Thunderbolt 5 is a little bit faster, is it going to make a difference when it comes to docks? 
and drives. I'm gonna start with this one because this is a drive I've been using for a little while now. And this is a Thunderbolt 4 SSD enclosure that's capable of 40 gigabit per second speeds. And it's got a Samsung 980 Pro inside. I'll link to both of these down below. I've really enjoyed using these, but let's see if there's a better option now. I've got my Thunderbolt 4 enclosure hooked up and I'm gonna select it here. Now, disk speed test is a test you've probably seen a lot on this channel and on other channels. What this does is test mostly sequential speed. Stop it right there. Those are pretty good numbers right there. There. And for most use cases, this is going to be just fine. How do those numbers translate to real world scenario? Well, let's see. I've got some pretty large files here. I've got this five gigabyte safe tensor file, which is uh, an LLM. It's part of an LLM. It's a really big one. So it's split it up into multiple files. Let's transfer this five gigabyte file from the drive to my local SSD on the actual machine. And we'll see how long that takes. Uh, that was like four seconds for a five gigabyte file. That's pretty good. I have a slightly bigger file here. Let's try that one. 9.2 gigabyte. Let's drag that one over and go. This is a video file. Video files are always pretty big. <sighs> it's... It's ridiculously fast. I can't even time that. So I asked ChatGPT of how I would create a large file and the DD command with a randomized input seems to be the way to do it. So let's boom, hopefully this will work and not blow things up. Hey, that worked. It took 140 seconds to generate a 50 gigabyte file. I'm gonna transfer this large file from my Mac to the external SSD, boom. Okay, 10 seconds left. And there we go. That was the write speed. Now we're gonna do the read speed. So I'm gonna copy this to a different place from the drive to my internal SSD. This is actually a bit of a faster process and start. And there we go. That was a lot faster for the read speed. Now, the reason I'm doing this on my old machine, not so old, but still older than this one, is because I want to get all the data points to see how much is it worth upgrading. And is it even worth getting an expensive brand new technology drive like this one to kind of future-proof yourself if you don't have necessarily a Thunderbolt 4 port on your computer? So let's see if this is going to be faster. First time plugging that in. I've got this one in here and let's do a quick speed test to see what we're getting. The numbers look almost the same, maybe just a tad bit faster, but they're within the margin of error though. Let's do some file copying. 53 gigabyte file down to the drive. That seems like it's quite a bit faster. I'm actually surprised. It's seeming to slow down a little bit at the end, so that's concerning. But overall, that was a faster time. Now, of course, what's inside the enclosure matters as well. It's probably a much newer drive itself. So that's why it's faster too. Not necessarily the Thunderbolt connection. Now try the read speeds and go. This is a 54, almost a 54 gigabyte file. It's transferring in about 10 to 15 seconds, which is crazy. Now let's switch over to this new machine with the Thunderbolt 5 port, but we're still using the Thunderbolt 4 drive. Let's see what the speed is here. Okay, so not that great. Is that a bit slower even? What happened? <laughs> <laughs> that seems like it's slower. Let's transfer the file. This is gonna be the read speed and go. Seems a little faster. Now we're gonna test the write speed from the computer down to the drive and go. This was definitely slower on the Blackmagic speed test. And just to remind you, this is a sequential read and write speed test. We're about to test some random speed tests as well. Almost done. This one is the slowest. And that's it. Okay, clearly much, much slower. Let's try the new drive. All right. I've got the new drive hooked up to this. Let's do the disk speed test first. Okay, there we go. <laughs> We're getting, wow, <laughs> 3,900, that's almost, f <gasps> whoa, 5,200 and 5,200, oh, wow. Okay, this is no joke, this is a lot faster. <laughs> this is Thunderbolt 5, pretty good, pretty good. So overall, these are pretty good speeds for the external drive. I've never seen an external drive this fast. Impressive, right, so far. What about random stuff? So this is all sequential read and writes. A random use case would be code compilation. And a good random benchmark that represents this is amorphous disk mark. So I'm gonna go back from the start and do amorphous disk mark on both the Thunderbolt 4 enclosure and the Thunderbolt 5 enclosure on both of these machines. 6900 read speed, that is faster than the internal drive of this M2 Max. Wow. And since we're here, I might as well show you what we're getting here. <laughs> These numbers are so much different. It's crazy. So we're going with Thunderbolt 4 port to Thunderbolt 4 drive. And here we got Thunderbolt 5 port to Thunderbolt 5 drive. Yeah. But hold on. Something's wrong here. What is that? Definitely killing it in sequential. Absolutely destroying it. But um, yeah, the random 
not so much with a the random. These results that we're seeing with the sequential being so much faster on the newer system than the older system is understandable, but the random read and write being slower on the newer system is puzzling. And that could be because of the drive itself. In fact, it's probably most likely because of the drive itself. So I'm gonna swap these to see if we can sort of surface that detail out. The puzzling thing that I see here is that random number and that's just weird. We've got a much higher random number connected to the same drive, the same Thunderbolt 5 drive using Thunderbolt 4 port. So eh, now we need to know the real world scenarios where this matters. What is code compilation? Well, it uses a lot of small files and it moves them around. That's basically what it does. There's a lot of dependence on the CPU. That's why I'm doing it on the M2 Max and the M4 Max. We'll be able to see that difference, of course, but I've already done those benchmarks and you can take a look at that. I'll link to the video down below, but also the random file read and writes that happen here as well. I'm gonna change my directory to the one on the external drive and let's run this. And there they go. Oh, look at you working so hard. This one's got a little indicator. I think the new OWC does. There is one on the bottom, but it's not blinking. All right, completely not related to this particular test, but I thought I'd mention it. Same build, M4 Max is making noise. M2 Max, no noise. This worries me. We've got results, folks, and this is obviously a lot slower <laughs> than running it on the internal drive. The whole system matters, not only the chip, but also drive. So the M2 Max with Thunderbolt 5 drive, comes in at 205 seconds. The M4 Max with the Thunderbolt 4 drive comes in at 128 seconds. I'm gonna keep saying Thunderbolt 4 drive. I just mean the Thunderbolt 4 enclosure with an NVMe drive inside of it from now on. Let's swap these out. All right, I've set this up, I've swapped the drives and let's run the benchmark. There we go. Let's see what happens here. Okay, folks, this is crazy. This one is still working, but this one is done. Do you know what this means? Not only is it done, but we got the same time that we got when running this test on the internal drive, which is the fastest time, by the way, that I've ever had on this particular benchmark. And it's the same speed. That means you don't have to get the four terabyte internal SSD anymore. You don't have to get the eight terabyte internal upgrade anymore. Thunderbolt 5 with an external drive will get you the same results. That is crazy. This one is still working. Look at that. We got 81 seconds for the new system, the Thunderbolt 5 system, I'm going to call it. And we got 175 seconds here. Note that the M2 Max MacBook Pro is capable of faster speeds when run on the internal drive. But with this system, it's not. And obviously, even if you're using the new drive, it's not. This is an incredible finding, and this will definitely <laughs> save you a lot of money if you're planning to get extra storage. I'm happy about that. Let's move on to docs. I've been using this little tiny one, and it's perfect for this test because I want to see if this MacBook Pro, the new M4 Max, can work with three 4K monitors through one port. We know it can work through multiple ports, but we want to use up one port and still have it on three monitors. Let's see. So what's nice about this little tiny dock is that it has three Thunderbolt outputs from one connection, which is perfect. You wait right there, Mr. Kensington. We'll get to you. And of course, I'm going to be using USB-C to display port connector cables like this. There it is. Okay, here's another one. Come on. Are you awake? <clears throat> Come on now. I'm recording a video here. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Two and one more. No signal detected. Hmm, maybe this cable is bad. Well, let's unplug this one or that one. Let's see what happens. Oh, that cable is not bad. This one works. So we've got these two. Now we lost that one. Looks like we can only run two monitors from this. I guess that's what this new dock is supposed to do. Let's plug everything in there. So this is the Thunderbolt 5 dock that I just got from Kensington. They sent this over so I could test it out. It's got two on the back and one on the front. All right, let's see. No signal detected again. Come on. It clearly says in the packaging, triple monitors at 4K support it. So what is going on here? Why am I only getting two out of the three to work? Well, if you take a look a little bit closer here, it says DSC. So the monitor needs to support DSC, which is display stream compression. And unfortunately, only one of my monitors, this one over here, this is the Doe 27 inch monitor. That one supports DSC, but the LG Ultrafine and the BenQ RD28 do not. So until I get some more monitors in here to test these things out with, then I guess I won't be able to test this particular feature, but it's a good thing I have two other ports. So if I really needed three monitors, or in this case, I can even have four on the M4 Max, I can just use one of the other ports. Ta-da! Now I've got my main display and three extra monitors connected. 
and I'm ready to rock and roll doing, I don't know, stock trading or whatever people with multiple monitors do. It's a lot of monitors. But since we're testing Thunderbolt 5, might as well see how those drives perform through this dock too. Disconnected the monitors and I've connected up these two drives again, but this time just to the Thunderbolt 5 dock. We're gonna start with the sequential benchmark test. What I'm finding is a bit annoying. The front here, puts out 60 watts, the front Thunderbolt connection from this dock, but the back puts out 15. And apparently that's not enough for a Thunderbolt drive, so it keeps disconnecting. So I'm gonna have to test them separately. Let's start with the fast one. Okay, it's not bad, but the read speed is about the same as what we were seeing before, connected directly, not through the dock, but the write speed is a bit slower. Still, you know, you, you can do plenty of stuff with this write speed, it's pretty good, but it's not quite the same. For sequential real world test, let's do our large file copy. Not too bad, that was actually really fast. Now let's do the write operation and it's done. So that was considerably slower this time. And for the random test, this is looking pretty good. Moving on to the real world test, which is our compilation. And boom, there we go. Now, if this gets 81 seconds, I will be really surprised. <laughs> I mean, it should get close to that. Well, it's done, let's see. Oh, 82.8, close enough, this is still really fast. So it's good to know that this dock is not really hindering the performance of the Thunderbolt 5 drive connected to it. And here is the table of all the numbers for you to check out. Just because you're getting this new system, the new Thunderbolt 5 capable machine with the Thunderbolt 5 ports and Thunderbolt drive and Thunderbolt dock does not mean that everything will work immediately out of the box. For example, you saw with my monitors, yes, the monitors will work, but not all three of them will work because we don't have DSC on some of the monitors. Now Thunderbolt 5 also has power delivery that's a higher wattage. This dock is capable of charging up to 140 watts, which is now the same as MagSafe. So you can get pretty much the same speeds charging a MacBook from MagSafe or from Thunderbolt. Overall, Thunderbolt 5 is a worthy improvement, especially if you're dealing with transferring very large files or if you have an extremely big desktop setup with lots of monitors, you're gonna save a couple of ports there. Now, if you missed my performance test of the new M4 family of MacBooks, check it out right over here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.